Hello and welcome to a YouTube video. This one, this video that you're watching. And that video happens to be how to make indie rock type beats in FL Studio. Type beat type video tutorial. Gone wrong. <laughs> Not clickbait. So indie music in general is one of my favorite genres of music, whether that be indie folk, indie rock, indie pop. Indie rock specifically is kind of like the big one. It's like the staple of indie music that people normally think of. And I've been making a ton of these beats recently, so I'm gonna teach you guys how to make them as well also here today. First things first, you're gonna need one of these, a guitar. Specifically this one on the end here, an electric guitar. So when it comes to what we're actually going to play on the guitar, what you want to do is just take a very basic chord progression with maybe four chords in it or something, and then you're going to take those chords and you're going to turn them into seventh, maybe even ninth chords if you're feeling a little fancy. So if I had a little chord progression that sounded like this, obviously it sounds cool like that, but we can spice it up and make it a little bit more indie. I'm going to play the exact same thing, but I'm going to change all those chords to seventh chords. So what I'm actually going to do here is record that guitar two different times and then I'm going to take one of them, pan it to the left and one of them pan it to the right. And this is going to give the guitar a much wider feel and it's also going to give it kind of a chorusy, just indie vibe. So when you've recorded both your guitar tracks, what you want to do is just double click on this, press control L and then do the same thing with the other one. And now we have them each assigned to their own mixer track. Pan one to the left. You can do 50, 60, 70%, just whatever you think sounds right for your track. And then what I like to do is control and click on both of these, and then just go down here on some empty mixer track, right click and do route to this track only. And now we have both of these guitars routed to this pink track right here. The reason that I do this is so that I can add effects onto just the pink track, and then it'll affect both of the guitar signals. So the next thing I'm gonna do here is the drums. I'm gonna record the drums on on this drum set right here, if you want to learn how to record drums in FL Studio, there's a video right there. So when it comes to indie style drums, you want to have a very dead, very muted kind of drum sound. So this means we're going to be using a lot of muting. I have a whole t-shirt right here on the snare drum. We've got a sleeping bag inside the kick, got some cloth on the hi-hats, the whole nine yards. But if you don't have a drum set, I'm going to show you guys how to program your own drums like this. So I actually do have a drum kit with 40 plus live recorded indie drum loops. I'll leave a link in the description below, but it also has some one shots in it too. So we're going to use those for this. So very simply, just with a kick, snare, and a hi-hat, what you can do is place your snare like this. And then just a little two-step hi-hat pattern. So with your kick, you can kind of just fill it in wherever you feel that there needs to be a kick. But a lot of these drum parts are going to be built around this kind of pattern. Kick here and then kick here. So it's going to be like this. But we can obviously embellish this a little bit. So let's add two here. And then we'll add um, a snare before this one. And then maybe one after this snare. So it sounds something like this. I actually made a video a while ago on how to program more realistic sounding drums. That'll be up there if you want to check it out. But I'll show you some of the tips right here as well. Take the velocities of the hi-hats and alternate every single one. And then with the kicks and snares, you can press Alt R and this will just kind of randomize the velocities a little bit so they're not all the same. So that is how you program some live sounding, indie sounding drums but I'm gonna use the ones I recorded. <laughs> so next up here, what I wanna do is record some bass. So naturally here we have a bass guitar. So once again here, I am aware that not everybody has a bass guitar. I myself didn't have one for a long time. So what I did was I turned my electric guitar into a bass guitar. But as you can see, I actually do have a bass guitar. So I'm just going to use that. So as far as what you want to actually play on the bass, you could get away with just doing the root notes of the chords you played. But I'm going to add a couple extra notes in there just to make it a little bit more unique and give it some more flow to it. So if you really wanted to be a minimalist here, you could just call it a day, say this is your indie rock beat and you're you're good to go. But we're obviously gonna add some more things and spice it up a little bit more. One of the things we're gonna add is a personal favorite of mine, shaker. 
damage. If you wanted to, you could also do a little tambourine action. In general, I like to have something up there in the high end that just kind of adds a little bit more to the track, fills it out, and kind of adds to the groove as well. Oh, you thought we were done recording guitar? You would be mistaken. Since we have just a very simple four chord chord progression, it's going to get a little repetitive after a while. So what you want to do is add some sort of lead guitar sound in there. The way that I do this is very technical, very scientific, and complex. I basically just play around with notes on the fretboard until I find ones that sound good, and the ones that sound good, I'll craft a melody out of those ones, and naturally the ones that sound bad, I don't play those ones. So you can record as many guitar melodies as you want, stack them on top of each other, whatever sounds good. But for the sake of the video, we're just keeping it fairly simple. So another thing that you can do, which is very optional, is actually add some acoustic guitar. Got one of those right here. Adding some acoustic guitar into the chorus or wherever else you might want to put it. It's just going to give your track some more life, some more depth. It's just going to make it better. If you don't have an acoustic guitar, no big deal. So the final instrument that we're going to add is some sort of pad sound or maybe a little organ or electric keys, something like that. This would be great for people who don't have an acoustic guitar because it'll really beef up your track a little bit and we're just going to use a plugin for it. So we're going to use expand exclamation mark two. So we're going to try it with an organ sound, just a light organ. So what we're going to do is just copy down the chords that we have. The chords we used were E minor, C major, G major, and B minor, but actually all of the seventh varieties of those chords. And then for the sake of it not getting too repetitive, what we're going to do is add another note at the end here. But this isn't really the main focus of the track. It's meant to be more of just a layer, so we're going to keep it more simple. So now we can get a little bit more into the mixing side of things. I'm not going to go super in-depth into the mixing process because it's a whole other thing on its own. The main idea, though, is that you want everything to fit together nicely. Nothing's too loud. Nothing's too quiet. You want everything to just sit exactly how you want it to in the beat. And a lot of that has to do with just simple volume and leveling kind of stuff. Starting off with the main electric guitar. This is technically it's two guitars. I'm going to put on CLA guitars by waves. We're going to pick the stereo option because it's in stereo. I like to go to the presets and then do electric and clear tone and then put this knob up to clean and then just mess with the settings until you get something you like. But as you can hear, this makes a huge difference. If you need help with mixing drums, I show how to do all that in my tutorial on how to record drums. But a simplified version here is you want to take all of these, assign them to an empty mixer track, and then we're just going to put a little reverb and then some compression and then some EQ at the end to kind of bring up some of the high end and kind of, you know, bring out some of the bass frequencies. With the bass guitar, I have a plugin that I really like a lot. It's this Black 76 compressor by T-Rex. Just the default preset on this thing makes it sound so good. For the shaker, you don't have to do anything too crazy. You can maybe cut out a little bit of the high end. And then I like to pan it a little bit far to one side. Which side you pan it to is gonna depend on the beat that you're making, but I think panning it to the right sounds good. With acoustic guitars, I like to use CLA Unplugged, but you can just also slap the FL Studio default reverb and EQ and all that kind of stuff on there. And then with the organ sound, the little layer that we added, I wanna have this with a lot of reverb. Just a lot of like realistic reverb, so it sounds like it's in a big room or something. So we can take this and just go large hall. So that's pretty much the basics of what we want to do with the mixing. And now the last thing we're going to talk about is how to lay out the beat. So you really just want to get creative with this. I a lot of times like to start off with the main guitar pattern. Let that play a little bit and then maybe bring in the lead. And then right there you can bring in the shaker as well. One thing that I would not recommend doing though is stacking up all of the layers like this and then having the drums drop in here. It's just going to feel very lackluster because you're not adding anything in there when the drums drop in. So you want to usually go from a section where it's a little bit thinner, you have less instruments to, you know, having more instruments. We'll have this play for a little bit and then we'll keep the drums going, keep the bass going, maybe take out the shaker and then just have these in there and then add the shaker in here maybe, maybe even add the organ sound in here. Honestly, just get creative as long as you don't let it get repetitive and as long as you don't overcomplicate it because it is possible to overcomplicate the layout of a beat, just adding like a ton of filter sweeps 
loops and volume automations and effects, all kinds of crazy stuff like that. This genre of music doesn't really require that. It's more simple, more stripped down. So we want to kind of stay true to that. But you can definitely add a couple crashes in there for transitions and stuff like that. That'll make your beat sound a little bit more professional. So yeah, I think that's pretty much going to do it for me in this video here today. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I hope this video helped you out. So now you can make some epic indie rock beats of your own. I've actually been posting a bunch of stuff like this on my beat channel. If you want to go check that out, I'll be uploading these kind of beats or whatever other stuff I'm working on pretty consistently. So you can go check that out. But yeah, like I said, I hope you enjoyed my Instagram and all that other social media stuff will be down in the description below if you want to go check that out. And I will see you guys next time.